In previous videos, we've looked at um, uh, mean drift velocity and uh, electricity in terms of voltage and uh, current. We're going to um, look at a uh, concept about electrons in a free space in some ways. So first of all, we start out with the idea of an electron gun. So um, an electron gun would look something like this um, with a, a hot filament lamp at one end and uh, you're going to have also an accelerating voltage um, which is out there. So what happens here is, is that you get electrons from the uh, hot filament, otherwise known as the cathode, um, created and because they are released, because they've had enough energy, they then uh, speed towards or are accelerated towards that positive terminal. And when they're accelerated as that positive terminal, they end up just keep going. Um, and what we can end up seeing as a result of that is a nice pretty pattern. And you'll see that in your physics class um, when you come in next time. Um, but the idea here is that we can use the values of the voltage and uh, whatnot to see and explain how fast electrons are moving. So first of all, you need to be aware that we've got a voltage across here. So that voltage across there that is creating um, a potential difference between um, this point and this point. So as a result, they are going whoop, and they want to go over there because their negative charge of the electrons is pulling them across that gap. They gain enough energy so that they keep going and going and going. So um, how do we use the ideas of voltage and whatnot to allow us to work out, um, for example, how fast these electrons are going? Well, we first of all need to realize we need to use the equation half mv squared is equal to the kinetic energy. And obviously we'd be expecting these to be moving, so that's why we're using kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is going to give rise to uh, the equation half mv squared, and what we're essentially looking for here is something that's going to allow us to work out v. So we've got a few values that are missing. Um, now a lot of these are constants in your uh, in your data sheet. So first of all, the mass of an electron, okay, um, is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. So that's 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And that's in kilograms, of course. So we've got M. That's accounted for now, so we're happy with that. We've got M. Um, obviously, we're looking to find out V. So we need to work out where am I going to get this kinetic energy from? Well, you may or may not remember that the accelerating voltage over here is an amount of energy per unit charge. And... As we can suggest, the amount of energy per unit charge that we have across this gap is going to be equal to the amount of kinetic energy that the electrons get as a result of that accelerating voltage. So, we can suggest that the voltage, since voltage is equal to an amount of energy per unit charge, well, we can suggest then that the amount of energy that an electron has is dependent on the voltage times by the charge. And since we're dealing with an electron here, as we've already noted, an electron, we can rewrite this to be VE, because E is the charge on the electron. E is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So E is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And so now we've got all the terms we need because this value here is, let me just write that again, this value here is the kinetic energy. So we can combine them. So we can combine them in, into an equation that suggests that EV is equal to a half mv squared. 
And as we've already ascertained, we've got this value as a constant, this value as a constant for electrons, and so all we're looking for now is the voltage and finally the velocity of the electrons as a result of this accelerating voltage. So we normally we get the voltage out from a voltmeter, so let's suggest for example that our voltage is uh, 5,000 5, volts. So say I've got a voltage of 5,000 volts. We know what E is. E is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and the mass is a constant as well at 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 that's kilograms so it's just a matter of rearranging this now and then plumbing the numbers into the equation so um, we can suggest we can do the algebra over here we can suggest that uh, 2 times EV is equal to MV squared because essentially we're timesing both sides by 2 and when we do that we get rid of the half next what we can suggest is that 2 EV divided by M is equal to V squared because this time we're dividing both sides by M and that allows us to get rid of the M and then finally, the final step of this algebra is to suggest that 2EV over M square root is equal to V. Because square rooting both sides removes the square on that side. And so it's just a matter of plumbing in the numbers now and uh, seeing what we get. So when I plumb those numbers in, I get an answer of um, 4.1 times 10 to the 5, or 4.19 times 10 to the 5, so 4.19 times 10 to the 5, and obviously the unit of that is meters per second. Now, what you will notice here is that this value that we've calculated here, this value right here, is really, really big. Um, and a lot of people are not surprised by electrons moving very, very fast when we have large voltages such as the one we've suggested here, um, which we'll hopefully demonstrate that in the lab as well. But for now, um, one of the main comparisons you need to be aware of is the fact that this value is very much bigger than the value we worked out for mean drift velocity. Now, mean drift velocity we were working out times 10 to the minus 5s and 4s and whatnot. They're very, very slow. Um, and as a result, they it somewhat surprises people to see the variation in speed. That electrical current could be so slow, but electrons in a free space can be so fast. Um, and these are the calculations that you need to do in order to show and prove that.